Hello guys, Crispy here and welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing the GIMPED GTX 1060, the 3 gigabyte model. Now, compared to the beautiful and kind of legendary GTX 1066 gigabyte model, the 3 gig has... You guessed it, half as much GDDR5 memory, but it also has a few less CUDA cores. The GIMP 1060 has 1152 CUDA cores, whereas the full fat 6 GB model has 1280 CUDA cores. That's a 10% difference in CUDA cores, and that translates to like a 5 to 10% drop off in performance comparing the two in games. Well, whenever those games aren't VRAM bound, that is. Both 1060s consume up to 100. 120 watts of power. In most games, I actually saw this consuming only around 90 to 100 watts most of the time. So they're pretty efficient little cards. And that's because when the 1060 released back in 2016, it was based on the Pascal architecture. A huge jump in efficiency compared to last generation, the 900 series. Finally, the 3 GB 1060 released for 199 US dollars a month or so after the GTX 1066 gigabyte model. And I was actually recommending the 6 gig model back in the days. It was only $50 more expensive and you got double the VRAM and 10% more performance. You know, and going into the future, I knew that those 6 gigabytes would help this card a lot. So uh, yeah, that's why it took me like 6 years to buy a GTX 1063 gigabyte. <laughs> but now that I did, let's find out how it runs the latest and greatest title, shall we? First up, we got Need for Speed Unbound, a very recent title, and we are playing it at the 1080p resolution using FSR2 on quality and the medium graphics preset. And FSR2 in this game on quality actually looks a little bit better than native resolution. I tried it at native resolution, it has has TAA by default and it looks really blurry at least on a 4k monitor that I'm using so yeah enabling FSR actually sharpens up the image a little bit and in my opinion it does look a little bit better although you can see a little bit of ghosting and shimmering at times around moving uh, subjects like cars <laughs> but overall I think I would choose to play with these settings I actually started this video by testing this on low native resolution and I was getting around the same FPS uh, while well, looking much worse, of course. So medium settings probably the way to go here with the 1063 uh, gigabyte model. VRAM is actually maxed out, but it's not really stuttering or anything, so it's pretty stable. I, I like the experience. Around 60 FPS, you don't really need 60 plus all of the time, and even in... <laughs> <laughs> forest areas like this one it only drops into like the 40s worst case scenario as you can see with a lot of vegetation this is the most intensive thing in the game basically it's more intensive than like uh, races and stuff like that it only drops into the 40s i think it's a pretty nice experience guys on a native 1080p monitor it will look pretty good and it will also perform really well also do you like my new car guys it's very beautiful isn't it i love the color of it actually and uh, i I kitted it out and everything very very nice so yeah again 60 fps average is quite nice for this game now to contrast need for speed we got battlefield 2042 this game actually relies a lot in the vram amount so not sure if it's gonna stutter a lot we're playing at 1080p lowest settings possible and we're here in the new spearhead map start counting the frames right here and it seems like it's actually pretty smooth it's not stuttery Wow, they have come a long way. Previously, this game wasn't playable even on 4 gigabyte cards because of huge stuttering issues. Uh, but now it is even on a 3 gigabyte card. This is great, but oh my god, no! No! You can play it smoothly for like one minute or so and then it goes to hell, I think. Because that VRAM buffer actually fills up. Yeah, that is the case, guys. Look at that. The frame time is going crazy. Sometimes it's smooth, sometimes it isn't. So this is also a 128 player server, by the way. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. No, let's just, oh my God, what the hell? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh boy. 
Okay, I'm just gonna get out of here now. <laughs> okay, so we lost that one. It wasn't smooth whatsoever, and something that you could do with 4 gig cards when they were struggling a lot at 1080p was drop the resolution, so we're at 720p, still using the lowest settings. All right, here we are at 720p, guys, and uh, a lot of people on screen at the moment, basically our entire team. Seems like it is still a little bit stutter. You can tell by the 1% lows, they went down by a lot. Look at that again. You know, it's way better than what we were seeing at 1080p, that's for sure. Oh, whoa, whoa, this is why I don't drive very often here in Battlefield. I prefer infantry combat, yes. <laughs> now, the thing is, at 720p, it becomes quite hard to uh, spot your enemies at the distance. I don't like it very much. 720 is just too low of a resolution to play Battlefield with. Oh, it's starting to stutter a lot more now. Yeah, the VRAM is totally maxed out right now, and it still has a lot of frame time issues and stutters. Next up is the easiest game on the list, probably. It's Valorant, and we're playing it at 1080p resolution using the high settings with two times. MSAA. This game is just, it runs on a potato, so no wonder the 1063 gig can do an amazing job at it. Oh boy. Get over here, boy. Get over here. There we go. Good job. We're doing it now. Of course, the super high FPS won't really do much if you suck at the game, but they do help a lot. And if you're aiming for a competitive experience in this one, this is it. You can run like a 240 hertz monitor with a 1063 gigabyte. Let's you go, a couple of kills right there. Digimon is actually calling me for some reason. <laughs> oh my god, we're doing really well. I'm sorry, Digimon, you're probably gonna edit this video, but this is why I'm not answering your call at the moment. We tend to dust. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 nice, 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 let's go, let's go, continue here. Oh boy, no, 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 what? How did you not die with that? There we go. We won 266 average and almost 201% lows. It's, it's perfect here in Valorant. Now the beautiful Fortnite using Unreal Engine 5.1 is up next. We're playing at 1080p using the medium settings with 100% resolution scale. And seems like it's gonna be a pretty nice experience, especially compared to the 1050 Ti that I tested yesterday. Even though this has one less gigabyte of VRAM, it's way faster than that card. However, that VRAM is close to being maxed out at the moment. I'm gonna start counting our frames. Oh boy, there's a guy right here. Oh. Hello, what what did you do, dude? What the hell? It's still Stutter Knight, by the way, as you can see. I'm not sure if it's because of the VRAM being maxed out at the moment, or the actual game that's stuttering, because, well, it's Fortnite. <laughs> the VRAM is actually just on the edge of being maxed out. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but it's at like 2.8, 2.9 gigabytes. Sometimes it goes up to 3. That could be a little bit of an issue. Maybe lower the texture resolution to like low instead of medium. But right now it's been pretty smooth so far. We only got a couple of stutters at the start and now it's it's all right. The game also looks really good on medium settings, guys. The LOD is pretty low, by the way, but yeah, what can you do? High settings will just wreck any GPU out there because it has ray tracing and, well, you just gotta live with these low LOD values, especially on the shadows. That's very noticeable. Look at that. The colors are just absolutely insane. The, the graphics of this game are beautiful these days, guys. We're not even utilizing any TSR, the built-in upscaler of the game. We're running native 1080p at 90 FPS. This is running better than the 1050 Ti ran at low settings and 1080p resolution. Come on, dude. All right, I guess we've seen enough anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now it's Call of Duty Warzone 2 at 1080p using the absolute minimum settings aside from the resolution scale which is set to 100%. As usual we're gonna go to one of the most intensive areas in the entire map right here because it's a city surrounded by water uh, and the water is actually the most intensive thing in this game because well I guess of the physics I don't know but look at that it instantly drops near 30 frames per second. That is super concerning, dude. Like, it's absolute minimum settings already, aside from, like, upscalers and the resolution scale, of course. 
and it is dropping from 60 fps on a 1063 gig i just <laughs> if it wasn't for the water guys for example if you drop right here or right here where there is no water around you can actually get 60 plus all of the time and you might actually see some comments down uh, below saying that i ah, this video is a fake because i get 60 plus fps with my 1060 in warzone 2 i've had a lot of those but you know why you get 60 plus with your warzone 2 and your 1060 because you don't drop here okay <laughs> if you do exactly the same thing that i'm doing dropping in this scenario and taking a look at the water and stuff you're gonna see major drops in performance. That's a very, very big shame because as you can see right here, it can actually go up into the 80s at times and it's buttery smooth, but then it isn't when you come across the water. I really like this benchmark run because it gives us a little bit of everything. You know, most intensive scenarios back there, then least intensive scenarios with 85 FPS or so, and then a little bit of a forest area where it also drops from 60 FPS, as you can see. So the 1063 gig is actually... Uh, struggling a little bit here in Warzone 2. Oh boy. No, no, no. Fun. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the gorgeous Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p resolution using the medium settings. Some things are on high, some things are on medium, uh, but yeah, it's the balanced preset basically. And let me tell you guys, this is looking absolutely fantastic in terms of the lighting and stuff like that. Unfortunately, the textures look pretty lackluster here. <laughs> Roach, get over here, boy! Even though we are using high textures, only ultra textures look good in this game. It still looks really smudgy look at the ground for example anyways these fps that we're getting right now are really playable in red dead redemption 2 you know like 40s that's extremely good for this game it's not a fast-paced game it's not a first person shooter so i in my opinion don't have a problem with like 40 plus frames per second all of the time bob is not here so we're killing bob's friends because uh, yeah only Bob's friends hang around this area right here, and me, to kill them bastards, okay? I would actually play at these settings. Maybe even consider going into the config files and setting the textures to ultra. Yes, it will saturate your 3 gigabytes of VRAM on this card, but it won't really stutter all that much, and it's gonna look way better than it does right here. I'm trying to go to a little bit more of a forest area, see the vegetation, which is really intensive. Not dropping around here. It's really nice, guys. Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the best looking games out there. If you haven't played it yet and you have a GTX 1060, you definitely should buy it and play it, okay? And it has Roach in it, so you should definitely not miss out on this one. <laughs> if you want more FPS or if you need more FPS, there's still FSR 2.2, I believe, in this game. You can turn that on and achieve a little bit higher frames. And you can also turn down the settings to low, although I really really do not recommend you to do that because you you just gotta appreciate those visuals in this one you know it's fine boy it's fine apex legends is next at 1080p resolution low settings and low textures look at that getting 60 plus looking at the entire map from above that's actually a little bit unexpected honestly guys because this is like worst case scenario basically at least in the spaceship not bad. Well, it's almost worst case scenario because uh, ultimates and stuff like that with a ton of explosion and uh, explosion, <laughs> explosions and smoke effects. Yeah, that's where it drops the most actually. But look at that, a hundred plus FPS right now. How crazy is that? I was not expecting that. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Maybe I haven't played Apex in so long that I just didn't remember how well it ran on low settings in a 1060, but it's surprising. You can run a high refresh rate monitor with this card in Apex Legends. I'm all alone, by the way. Oh boy, against the duos here. They're shooting each other. I don't think they spotted me. I think they were just shooting each other and uh, one of the shots just went by me. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm just gonna go this way, try to uh, get my ultimate and throw it out. But I gotta say, 140 FPS average, that's really dang smooth. Let's go up there. There are some enemies inside of here. There's one right there. 
Oh boy, missing everything. Okay. Uh, again, the high FPS won't really make you a pro at any game. They help a lot. If you play the games very often, you will get better at it. Dropping down into the lower 100s because there is a lot of grass in this area, I guess. And that's really intensive in this game as well. Oh boy, I'm screwed, am I not? Yeah, don't, don't miss that much crisp fries. Please, don't you miss? Okay, thank you. Oh, people are shooting at us still. Oh, no, come on, come on. No, 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 no. No, no, no. All right, guys, I dropped in a different area now, right there, and I've been counting the FPS ever since I dropped, and we're still getting around the same frames per second as we saw previously. Right here, it drops immensely. Look at that, 90 frames, 80 frames per second at times, but it's still buttery smooth. Can I actually go here and jump? Oh, yes, I can. That's beautiful. <laughs> I'm actually gonna throw my ultimate out here because we're getting like 80s to 90s uh, plus the explosions and plus some smoke effects because of this. It might actually drop from 60 in just a little. Okay, there we go. Yeah, 49 FPS minimum here. Well, there, there are all of those things happening on screen. Yeah, it gets a little bit rough, but it's only for like half a second or so. So I don't think it's a major deal. And if you must have... 100 plus FPS all of the time. Well, 720p is there for you. Cyberbug 2077 is next at 1080p resolution using the low settings preset. I changed the texture quality to low, by the way, and the FOV to 100. And over on the gameplay tab, we're using low crowd density. And this is a super intensive title. It's so intensive that the 1060, the poor little 1060, <laughs> can only achieve 30 something fps here on average at 1080p low now granted the low settings preset now isn't the same as the low settings preset uh, like six months ago they actually changed it and set some of the things on medium but this is really concerning me actually you know what it's it's dropping so close to 30 fps at times that uh I'm not sure if these are the adequate settings for the 1060 anymore. We might need some FSR here. Oh my god. Look at that. It hasn't dropped yet, though. If you want the 30 FPS experience, I'm so sorry, officer. Oh boy, we're doing really bad. Okay, can you please get the, the heck out of the way, please? Okay, uh, goodbye, Bob. There we go. Bob is dead. If you want that last-gen console-like experience, you can just lock the FPS to 30 and play on low settings. Look at that. Oh, boy. Okay, this is the most intensive street that I've ever seen, and it only dropped to 29, so... I expected better, guys. If you overclock the card, it won't really drop from 30 FPS whatsoever, so there's that as well, but it's way worse than I expected. FSR 2.1 in this one, and let's set it to quality. It still looks pretty damn nice oh yeah it definitely does look really good still and we're now getting 40s instead of 30s so a really nice bump up in performance in this game by using fsr yeah i think i would just play like this honestly unless you just want that 30 fps experience once again if that's what you want you can play at native res just fine but i think that fsr 2.1 on quality in this game at least at 1080p it looks really close to to what we've seen at native res oh my god okay i wanted to kill bob there jesus christ people stop it stop it get out oh my gosh i just want to see the fps around the roundabout right here i'm so sorry oh god damn it okay <laughs> this is really hard to control the cars in this game bob is just chilling there still oh boy goodbye bob just die already let's see how much it will drop to here 40 fps so we gained 11 frames per second at the minimum by enabling fsr 2.1 on quality while looking really similar to native resolution at the same time so use these settings with the 1063 gig now it's spider-man miles morales and we're playing this one at 1080p resolution using taa and the medium settings with low textures that's the only change that i did here to this graphics preset and the reason why i changed the textures to low instead of medium is because it was stuttering a heck of a lot on medium textures. The VRAM was completely saturated, it wasn't a playable experience, it was stuttering every like three seconds or so, and this is a much smoother experience right now, just by lowering the textures to low, it puts us well above like 40 frames per second all of the time, even near the streets right here. And that's a very playable experience. Once again, for a single-player title that's not a first-person shooter, I think 30-plus FPS is completely fine. Even here in the Central Park area, it's not dropping. 
Yeah, it's getting like 50s actually. That's better than what I expected in this area, honestly. This is where it was stuttering the most previously with medium textures. Now it's uh, hanging in there pretty well. VRAM is not completely maxed out and it is smooth overall. Now, one thing that I noticed is that with the low textures, these reflections look absolutely terrible. Like, look at them. What the hell is that? If you get really close, they get a little bit better, but yeah, these buildings look terrible because of that. But there's no way around it, basically. On high textures, they look really good, but if this stutters on medium textures, well, this is the way to go. Low, you know? <laughs> Everything else on medium, though, so that's nice. We got the ambient occlusions, the shadows, the good effects. Oh, that is damn smooth, dude. This is PUBG now, guys, and we're playing it at 1080p resolution using the low settings preset because medium actually uses a little bit more than 3 gigabytes of VRAM and starts stuttering just a little bit. It's very minor, but I prefer to have no stutters at all, you know? By the way, every single scene Season, the performance is a little bit different. It either stutters or it doesn't stutter. Uh, it apparently stutters in this season. Anyways, if you're looking for a high refresh rate experience in PUBG, you definitely can have it. Finally got my first kill, friends. Oh boy, we instantly died. <laughs> Level 500, boy. It also doesn't look very bad here on low settings because you do get some decently looking shadows, some uh, good ambient occlusion as well. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, we got another one. We got another one. That's great. Two kills, friends. Two kills. I'm definitely a very bad as asset for my team, you know? Oh, no, 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 no. Now, this is just Team Deathmatch, by the way, in a little part of the map. Of course, FPS will vary depending on the different parts of the map and stuff, but it gives you a pretty good representation of what to expect here in this game. It's still pretty intensive because a lot of people are in this tiny little space shooting at each other with a lot of effects and stuff. And whenever you're playing Battle Royale, it's just... Kind of a, a little bit boring. <laughs> it's Overwatch time, and since Crisp is a noob at this game, I'm here to test it out. We're playing it at 1080p resolution with high settings. So let's start counting the FPS. Oh, what? A I did something. <laughs> and I'm the noob. I'm nervous. <laughs> it's a Sunday video, and I'm nervous. Oh, that fail. Wow, so many FPS, guys. Look at that. Uh, no, please. Ah. I'm not good with Orisa, guys. <laughs> I actually played with the 1060 before, but I was playing with the uh, in 1440p resolution, and it was pretty good. But my uh, 1060 was the Gaming X, and it was six gigabytes, so it's probably a little better than this, right? <laughs> I'm looking at Chris because. I don't remember. So I think even if you play this at 1440p, it's gonna be good, right? So it's only 10% worse. It's hard to focus and play. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know better than me. Okay, I'm just gonna heal people. Well, at least we're, we're winning. My team is doing something since I'm not. I better not push. <laughs> let's, let's look at the map. I drank coffee and my hands are shaking. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Come on! Okay. Oh. oh boy! <laughs> I'm not killing anyone, it's you only assists. Two. You killed two! You killed oh, okay. Two. It only says assists. What the heck did you lose? So, guys, it is very good for a high refresh rate experience, as you can see. 144 Hertz Plus is gonna run fantastic on the 1063 gigabyte in this game, even on high settings. So, uh,. It's perfect for a game like this, basically. It's time for the old boy GTA 5. We're playing at 1080p resolution, no MSAA, using very high settings. Grass quality is set to high and post effects is set to normal because it's like my custom settings, basically, for best visuals to performance ratio. Let's start counting our frames right now. And as you can see, this is a pretty good experience. Not super high refresh rate, but it is buttery smooth on a high refresh rate monitor and it is well above 100 frames per second. It might drop in Jack's Hill, of course, because that's where it's most intensive at, but 
it is buttery smooth, guys. The GTX 1060 in GTA 5 is, is actually overkill for this game at 1080p, if you don't use any anti-aliasing, that is. Also, this game, even in 2022, is looking pretty fantastic, my friends. I cannot believe how good GTA 5 still looks all these years later. It's released back in 2013 on consoles and 2015 on the best platform ever, PC, of course. <laughs> Uh, and it still manages to look insanely good up into the 130s here very very good and smooth oh my gosh i painted the entire car and i was thinking that i didn't hit a ton of people there <laughs> oh boy okay let's go this way visit jack we're almost there this is where it's gonna be really intensive as i told you dropping into the 90s only wow i actually expected a bigger drop here hello jacqueline how's it going i wish to see jack but you know jacqueline is fine as well goodbye bob burn in hell boy that's been it my friends gta 5 super nice next is another old but super popular game csgo at 1080p resolution using the low settings with high textures and two times msaa oh my god guys these are some insane frame rates right here what the hell and it's two times msaa I thought, well, CSGO is more CPU bound than anything, so I'll enable 2 times MSAA. I thought we'd get like 300, 250, but nope, <laughs> it's getting close to 500 at times. What the hell, bro? That's insane. That's crazy. Oh my god, I'm not doing very well today. <laughs> All right, we got one there. Oh, wait, somebody spawned. Nice, we got them as well. Let's continue. No, no, no. Oh, I, I actually headshot at the guy. Did you see that? The flick connected. <laughs> oh, that was totally random there. Okay, we're doing great after all. Never mind. We're still wrecking them bastards. Okay, we just killed the one bastard there. Another one down. All right. That was the weirdest headshot ever, but it worked. Uh, hello there. Another one down. 1% lows indicate a little bit of stuttering. That's completely normal in this game. It's because of uh, the deathmatch, basically. In competitive modes, it will stutter way less or not stutter at all. But I usually tend to play uh, these deathmatches because it's easier for the benchmarks, you know. Oh, I know what's happening, guys. There are a ton of Portuguese people here playing in this server. And the Portuguese people of CSGO, they try really hard, okay? They're the best CSGO players. I am Portuguese, and I'm gonna win this one, so that's how you know. <laughs> oh, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> okay, all right, three kills. That was nice. There we go. The Hellfire Cheese won the game. Ah, here we go with a Christmas-themed car and a VRAM warning right away. Okay, <laughs> let's go over the settings first. We're playing it at 1080p resolution using TAA anti-alias, I mean, a temporal anti-aliasing, yes, and the high settings preset, and the game looks pretty good like this, as you can clearly see, like, it's an amazing looking game indeed. And it's running above 60 FPS. Now, I don't know if it will stay above 60 FPS the entire time because, well, it gets really intensive in the city areas of the game. But right now, at least, in this tiny little city, it's not dropping. Also, guys, even though we are actually running out of VRAM, 3 gigabytes is not enough, supposedly, <laughs> to run high settings in this game. It's not stuttering whatsoever. You'll have that VRAM warning thing happen every once in a while like every 10 minutes or so but overall it's gonna be buttery smooth anyways all right we're almost there guys we're almost approaching the city well we are approaching the city we're almost in the city and will it drop from 60 oh boy okay 60 flat that's what i saw there again 60 flat but it's not dropping oh there we oh my god okay okay well it drops to 58, no, not a problem, right, guys? If you give it a little bit of an overclock, it will actually stay above 60 FPS the entire time at native 1080p with high settings. That's extremely good for a 3 gigabyte 1060, actually, guys. Look at that, it's also pretty intensive, looking at the city from this angle, 50s. 
it's not the end of the world either, you know, it's a car game, racing title, you don't really need 60 plus all of the time. Drops into 45 um, in the worst case scenario, which is getting out of the tunnel for a split second. And lastly, we got Dying Light 2 at 1080p, FSR is set to ultra quality. I'm gonna increase the sharpness to 100 because it actually looks pretty good like that. And over on the advanced graphics settings, we're using the low settings preset, not lowest settings, with medium textures instead of high because it actually set that too high uh, and with these settings it's barely good enough for like 60 fps as you can see it's okay guys it's not like the best uh, experience ever here in dying light 2 of course but it looks pretty decent <gasps> oh, oh! so what happened there was um, I thought space was to open the parachute because it always is space to open the parachute in other games, but not in this one. In this one, it's Z. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's go. I, I know it now. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. I, I actually thought I was going for the other building there, but apparently we don't have enough reach. Even to... Okay, anyway, uh, I'm gonna start counting the FPS again. This is a little bit of a different on-screen display, of course, but that's because MSI Afterburner isn't really working here in Dying Light 2. This isn't as accurate with, like, the minimum FPS and maximum FPS, though. Like, it didn't go up to 141. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it still manages to show us our averages in FPS, which is the most important thing. After all, it is a playable experience. It's not a stuttery one whatsoever. Uh, actually, they, they improved the game a lot by... Oh, that, that's blinking a lot, okay. <laughs> uh, what the heck is it scream? Jesus. Yeah, as I was saying, when the game came out, it used to stutter a lot, especially when you ran out of VRAM, but not now. Uh, we're using a 1063 gig and it's buttery smooth, uh, even with medium textures. And medium textures are the lowest textures in this game for some reason. They actually hid the low settings textures in the config files. So if you want low textures, you gotta go into config files and change it there. Why? I, I just don't know. <laughs> no matter where you are in the map, you're always gonna get around like 50 to 60 frames per second. And we finally arrived at yet another conclusion time. Is the 3 gigabyte 1060 dead? Definitely not. Should you buy one in 2022 slash 2023? Only if you find it for a bargain price. I mean, it, it's not a bad card, it doesn't even consume a lot of power, so it's still very relevant for a lot of people. So I think, like, if you find it for 60 or 70 bucks or lower than that, of course, it's actually a pretty decent buy. Just don't expect it to run the latest and greatest games at high FPS, of course. But they will run, unlike the 1050 Ti. Yeah, in a lot of the games that we played today at 1080p on the 1060 3GB model, they ran better than on the 1050 Ti 4 gigabytes. So, gigabytes aren't everything, my friends. <laughs> and that's been it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, catch you in the next one very soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.